from classic country hits I should have been a cowboy to memorable American anthems. Oh, red, white, and blue. Toby Keith was a force to be reckoned with throughout his whole career, providing staple country music from the early 90s and all the way to the early 2020s. I said, girls, I ain't as good as I once was. With country music as popular as it is nowadays, there was a man that was not just a star, but a guiding light, illuminating the path forward with his unique blend of grit, humor, and unapologetic patriotism. An soldier, an this isn't just a top 10 list, but the legacy of Toby Keith. But don't let the old man Right out of the gate at number 10, we have Red Solo Cup. Now Red Solo Cup is the best receptacle for barbecue. Due to its playful nature and simplicity, I don't think I could rate it any higher than 10, but when this song came out, you can't deny everyone and their grandma was singing it. Red Solo Cup, uh -huh, uh -huh. I fill you up. The simple yet effective lyric, Red Solo Cup, I fill you up, let's have a party, was bound to be stuck in everyone's head. Released in 2011 as the second single off of Clancy's Tavern, it was actually the only song off the album he didn't co-write or write by himself. When the Warren and Beaver brothers were trying to get the song off the ground and looking for the perfect suitor, they tossed it around town, but eventually they approached Toby thinking he would be the perfect guy to do it. This is what Toby thought about the track. Let me tell you about Red Soul Cup. Red Soul Cup is the stupidest song that I've ever heard in my life. But it's freaking awesome stupid. <laughs> it is like, it is like almost you're embarrassed to say that you like it. Even though he knew the song was a bit comedic, he knew it was going to be a smash. And just like that, he released the iconic drinking anthem and people went crazy for it. Let's have a party. Next, we have the upbeat 90s hit, a little less talk and a lot more action at the number nine spot. With a little less talk and a lot more action. This was originally done by Hank Williams Jr. in 1992, but Toby recorded it a few years later. With a little less talk and a lot more action. To me, this is a song that just embodies that 90s country sound that we've all come to love. You can just imagine pulling somebody on the dance floor and grooving to this tune. Can you imagine if there would have been a version of Hank and Toby singing it together? That would have just been awesome. It kind of gives you that same feeling as Boot Scoot and Boogie or Watermelon Crawl with its upbeat electric guitar with that honky tonk piano in the background. It represents what we love about country music. It'll get you in a good mood, want to go out on the town and dance the night away. Number eight, I love this bar. I Love This Bar became a bar anthem in the early 2000s, and I feel like we all have a place we love to go to, and you'd often find all sorts of people that would walk in. For Toby, it included cowboys, truckers, fighters, hustlers, his favorite bar had it all. Chain smokers and boozers, man we got yuppies. Toby definitely knows how to write a good hook, and this song proves it. The humming he does right before he sings, I Love This Bar, will get you vibing straight away. Toby always finds a way to throw playful lines in his songs, and in this one he sings, I like my girlfriend, I like my truck, but I love this bar. And that's why Billboard pinned it as a beer joint staple for years to come. I love this bar, Number seven, the song that he dedicated to all those who served, American Soldier. I don't do it for the money, there's bills that I can't pay. This was released at the time when the US was just beginning their heavy involvement in the Iraq war, and it gave troops a sense of pride, but also their families too, having to deal with loved ones being gone overseas. Yeah, I'm steady, yeah, I'm true down to the core. No matter if you've served or not, you can take pride in your country in this song and appreciate the sacrifices veterans have to make in their lives to keep our nation free. 
Toby has done countless performances for those in the armed forces through the USO, and this song is just the perfect dedication by Toby of his commitment to shining light on the people who fight for our freedom. Its emotional melody and Toby's passion and vocals make this song much more heartfelt. Throughout his whole career, he made sure that those sacrifices were never forgotten. But stay tuned because coming up we have another American anthem by Toby and I think you might know what it is. But at number 6, let's get back to partying with Toby and Willie. Beer for my horses. Whiskey for my man. This tune is much more than its interesting title. There's a backstory behind it. Toby describes that when he was in high school, he worked for a rodeo company. And there was an old man that he used to work with, and at the end of the night, he would offer Toby and the younger workers a swig of whiskey. Every once in a while, Toby would take up the offer, but explain that the boys were more hesitant because they didn't like drinking after him. One night, before saying their goodbyes, the older gentleman raised up his whiskey and said, whiskey for my men and beer for my horses. So I just put that in my back pocket and saved it. I thought it was comical. I thought it was profound. And later on in life, he would use the same quote in a song that would go number one on the Billboard Hot Country singles chart with the legend himself, Willie Nelson. He goes, what's the name of it? And I said, it's called Beer for My Horses. It's whiskey for my men, beer for my horses. And he said, I don't even need to hear it. I'm in. <laughs> Grandpappy told my pappy back in my day, son. Like many songs of his, it's a bit humorous with a line like Beer For My Horses, but it's an overall country jam that's easy listening, especially with Willie on the track. So if you ever fight evil forces and overcome it, raise a glass and toast, Whiskey For My Men and Beer For My Horses. So before we get into the number five spot, if you're a fan of Toby, I'd appreciate if you liked this video. We're just trying to build a community of country music fans and folk music lovers on this channel. And by this video, we're just trying to commemorate all the great music that he's put out into the world. And with that, at number five, we have How Do You Like Me Now? How do you like me now? The story goes that in the late 90s, the song was loosely written about his own experiences of people doubting him in his life, whether that be musically or you could say romantically. But Toby explains that it's about anything you want it to be that relates to you. How do you like me now? Now that I'm on my As Toby stated, a lot of people became successful after they've been told they won't ever be. So people can relate to this. It can be about an old flame or a boss or a teacher, whatever it means to each individual. It was a fun song to write. With its upbeat energy and guitar riffs that make you want to dance, it's just an energy boosting anthem that will lift your confidence. I could even see me listening to this on the beach. It's a summer song for sure in my opinion. And it was just too perfect when Toby won Album of the Year for How Do You Like Me Now in 2001 at the ACM Awards, fighting him one last time to say, How you like me now? For number four, we have Ain't As Good As I Once Was, the self-aware smash hit of 2005. She said I seen you in here before. This foot-tapping, humorous tune was a standout of his album Honky Tonk University. Throughout the song, Toby finds himself in humorous situations that bring light to his age, like meeting a couple of gals, but finding out that he's not as good as he once was, if you know what I mean, and his friend Dave getting caught up in a bar fight for hustling a game of pool. I said, Dave, I ain't as good as I once was. While Toby says, hey, I'm not as good as I used to be, Right now, in this moment, I'm going to give it my all, and I'm as good as I ever was. While aging is a part of life, we can appreciate his funny honesty in this track, and all who are going through it can relate to this song. And it makes the process a little bit more enjoyable. I ain't as good as I once was, but I'm as good once as I ever was will go down as one of the greatest sayings in history, no question about it. Throughout the mid 2000s, Toby provided tons of anthems that feel like they would fit in perfectly with the bar scene, and this is no exception. This is one of his most singable songs while keeping it real and relatable, and personally, this is the Toby Keith song I know almost all the words to, and why it's in my number four spot. As I ever was. Number three, taking the bronze, don't let the old man in. Don't let the old man in. 
At first, the song really didn't get the attention it deserves. It was actually inspired by Clint Eastwood at his golf tournament. Toby asked Clint what he's been up to, and Clint replied, he has to shoot a new movie here soon. Toby said, what keeps you going? He said, I, my whole life I try to get up and uh, do something, not let the old man in. And so I went home and wrote the song and sent it back to him and said, thanks for inspiring me to write a great song. The song would eventually go on to being Clint's movie The Mule, which is really cool to see. There's also another version recorded by Willie Nelson, and to me, this was just perfect for him, with Willie being at this legendary stage in his career, and even being over 90 years old, still doing collaborations and making hits in the music world. If you didn't know the day you were born once Toby was diagnosed with stomach cancer, I feel like this song took a whole other meaning. One line in the song that really resonated with me is how old would you be if you didn't know the day you were born? That in itself is super powerful and just reminds you to live each day to the fullest and how old would you really be if you didn't know the day you were born? You might feel, you know, 10 years younger than what you actually are. There is a, there is a line in there that one of the best lines I've ever heard. Don't ask me how old I would be if I didn't know the day I was born. Yeah. yeah. That's a heavy line there. Thank you for that, Toby. It's almost like while Toby is singing, he's reflecting on his life, but intentionally living in the present with purpose. Maybe one of Toby's best and most important performances in his career was at the People's Choice Country Awards with him singing this beautiful song. Yeah, many moons I have lived. Listen to what Toby says here. Right before I went on stage, everybody's going, this is going to be a big moment. Mm -hmm. The moment was so powerful. They hadn't seen me in a long time. Mm -hmm. Now they've released it to radio. I was like, Toby's got a new song out. No, he ain't. It's four years old. <laughs> you just didn't hear it the first time. It was a powerful performance indeed, and Toby never let the old man in throughout his cancer journey, and we're also grateful for the impact he made on the country music world. Taking the silver at number two, courtesy of the red, white, and blue. American girls and American this patriotic song is what you might immediately think of when you hear Toby Keith's name. Just like American Soldier, it's embracing the spirit of the United States, but instead of a slower, heartfelt, emotional song, it's the complete opposite in the way it makes you feel. Hey Uncle Sam, put your name. This was a powerful statement song made by Toby and was unapologetically patriotic. It wasn't called The Angry American for Nothing in its title. In response to the 9-11 attacks, he released this legendary tune that would be played on 4th of July cookouts and anytime you're in the American spirit. Just like we mentioned earlier, Toby was performing for soldiers all throughout his music career. In the summer of 2002, it went to number one on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart, symbolizing the togetherness many Americans felt after 2001. <laughs> All in all, this was simply a rallying cry Americans could get behind. Red, white, and blue. This song could have even been my number one spot, but at number one, I decided to go with one that I can't deny that I love. And with that, the number one goes to, drum roll, should have been a cowboy. Y'all gather around the campfire, little buckaroos. We're gonna do you a little campfire song here. I'll bet you never heard Omar Call me basic all you want, and I know that this is his most popular song, but every time it comes on the radio, I just want to yell it at the top of my lungs. I should have been a cowboy. I that hook is just incredible, and deep down, all of us who love country music can relate to this song. We all wanted to be cowboys growing up, learning how to rope and ride and play those campfire songs, just like Toby speaks upon. We long for adventure in the outdoors, and this song embodies that. In the early 90s before his first album came out, him and his buddies went on a hunting trip in Dodge City, Kansas. Toby said he and his friends took a break at a local saloon and his friend tried to get up and dance with a girl, but she ultimately turned him down. Next thing you know, she's up dancing with another man. Stan Tabari gets up from his stake and he said, I think I'm gonna go dance with her. And they're like, John, she ain't gonna dance with you. No, watch this. She turns him down. A little bit later, Young guy comes in, and she's right on the floor, and somebody goes, John, you should have been a cowboy. Ding, 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 ding. Stealing a young girl's heart. 
And when they got back to their motel for the night, Toby ended up writing the hit in about 20 minutes. He wouldn't know at the time, but this would be a legendary song in country music for decades to come. So for these reasons and its ability to be a hit for decades to come, that's why I have Should Have Been a Cowboy at my number one spot. I know that I missed tons of awesome songs in this video, so right now, here are some honorable mentions. I wanna talk about me, wanna talk about I wanna talk about Don't you know we ain't worth missing Gonna miss that smile Wave the shore, cast a line Look up and know how it ends That's my house and that's my car Toby Keith was a pioneer in the country music world, and it's no question that we've all grown up with his music, or at least I did, and I know that he was definitely a staple throughout my whole entire childhood, but his music will live on forever, and we're so grateful for all the music that he put out into the world. It's crazy to me that we're almost at 10,000 subscribers, which is completely insane. I'm so thankful for everyone um, that tunes into these videos. It definitely means a lot to me, but other than that, I will see you in my next video. Take care.